The average home has over 2,000 lineal feet of cracks and gaps. Now, through these cracks and gaps, largely around doors and windows, a lot of air can infiltrate into or exfiltrate out of the structure. In fact, some experts believe that as much as 30 to 40 percent of all of our heating and cooling bills are due to air infiltration. Well, there are a lot of products on the market that you can seal with, and many of these foam products may seem the same, but actually they're not. Uh, today with me is Larry Ratliff from Convenience Foam Products. Steve, and you? tell me why your product is different than the standard foam insulating products on the market. Window and door is a foam that expands triple the size of its input, as does all the other foams. What makes it different is the skins that encapsulate that it, it, it emits the pressure, so there's no pressure buildup. In most cases, when you're using a, a conventional foam, there's six to eight pounds per square inch of pressure that comes off of these, this foam. So which is why this broke. Which, it, which actually expands this cup. And what happens on a window on a door, it expands that window or expands that door. So when you go to close the door or slide the window, it create, creates enough pressure. You're not getting good operation on that door. And that's what we're seeing here. That's right. This is standard expanding foam. What this shows is it shows the triple typical expansion foam exerts six to eight pounds pressure as it, as it dries and expands. That pressure exerts on sidewalls, which makes windows and doors difficult to open. What we've done with window and foam, foam is the fact that it can be... Uh, there's no gassing, so therefore when it expands, there's no pressure. It has zero pressure as it expands and dries, which makes it safer for doors and window ap application. Well, great. Sounds like a great idea. Now, also, uh, this is a fairly easy product to work with. I noticed that uh, it's, you can just you fill gaps and cracks and just paint right over it. It's designed to fill gaps to stop airflow, but the nice thing about it is the, the average homeowner We'll put more in, and this will expand beyond where they think it's going to expand. This shows a, uh, a, a, a joint that we've, we've created. We've sprayed foam into that joint, and we actually oversprayed it on purpose to show what happens. As it expands, you get all the stuff that comes out and dries into a very tight film. But the nice thing about it is you can razor cut it down and just shear it off, patch it, and paint it, which makes a nice joint so you don't have all this foam sticking out. People say, what do I do? They can patch and Great. paint it. Tell me about the packaging. It looks like we've got a couple different options of how we can use this. We have uh, two different packages. One's for the, the homeowner, the do-it-yourselfer. This is what they call the straw foam. They come in and they, they, they attach the tip. The tip is, uh, this one's closed up. And so they can come in and just shoot it. It, it shoots upside down oh, wow. and they can put it any place they want. Good idea. Then, we, then we get into the professional. The professional is what we call gun foam. And this is where the professional, the, the builder, the contractor who's doing hundreds and hundreds of homes, he screws us on, he has twice the foam. And the nice thing about this is with straw foam, once it sets up on the straw, you're gone. You have to, you have to, you have to get a new straw because uh, then you have to clean it. You have to clean the nozzle to make it work. It becomes a problem. Most people just throw it away. With the gun it's foam... It's a one-time use. It's a one-time use, exactly. With the, with the professional gun foam, the minute he stops this trigger, it stops the action, so he doesn't have to worry about that. We have a cleaner that he can put on top of this, clean the gun, he can reuse this time and time again. So he can use this over a period of weeks without having to worry about throwing it away. So it's very uh, cost savings for the contractor's standpoint. And this also acts like a pretty good adhesive. So foam is an excellent adhesive, and one of, the, one of the things we always like to recommend, because it sticks so well, is you want to make sure you wear protective gloves and eyeglasses because if it gets on your skin and dries, you'll not get it off your skin. You'll have to go to the doctor. So we always recommend that you wear protective gloves and eyeglasses. But it, it's got great adhesion to wood and metal and, and all the different substrates that's in your home. So it's going to stick and create that airtight uh, advantage. Well, and we can do a demo. Describe to me uh, how would you recommend a ceiling around a window. When you get into a window or a door, there's, there's spaces, there's air gaps. That's where the air comes in and goes out, which is losing energy. With the, with, the, with the window and door foam, you spray it in about a third. You go from the back to the front. You just put about a third of that depth on the foam and then walk away. It'll expand and create that tightness, and it'll find all the little nooks and crannies where air can get in and out and seal that up tightly. Without exerting pressure on Without the Without exerting any pressure on the, on the surfaces. Larry, what kind of coverage would a can like this give us? The average can will do four 36 by 60 windows or two full-size doors as far as the outside perimeter of those so doors. So the number of cans for a typical 2,000 square foot house? Probably windows. four or five cans would probably cover their whole house. And that'll do, do a great job for them and really cut down their energy cost. Well, Larry, great information. Thanks for being here. Thank you. I appreciate it.